Hello, welcome to the Rocket Ship Project. This series takes a project from end to end, including modeling, texturing, rigging, tracking a plate, lighting and rendering, animating, adding particles, uh, doing a render breakdown, and finally compositing the shot. In this first segment, we'll start with a simple sketch and build it from scratch into a model that is ready for texturing. Okay, so when I laid this, I actually got geometry at the resolution of uh, the two-point polygons that I had created. Uh, we definitely want the sense that these things can actually rotate. And let's check the contour of the upper one as well. We can see we need to push that in a little bit. That's feeling, that's feeling really nice. That's starting to really feel like our rocket ship. So, the next thing we need to do is add our secondary uh, wing here. We have this other, whatever it is, maneuvering jet wing on the outside as well. And what the shear tool allows me to do is, by right-clicking it, I can set where there's more and less shear. By dragging left to right, I've said there's more shear at the right and less shear at the left. Now when I left-click to use the tool, it's going to, do you see what I mean by shear? Move it this way. I'm just going to get that angle, and then I'm going to move all these vertices upwards. I'm going to bevel it in a little bit. That's going to create a nice controlled corner. I'm going to bevel it in again. Do another little bevel, a little bevel inwards, and then I'm going to go in with it. So do you see how I've created those corners? And those will give me really tight control. So watch what happens when I subdivide this. I can actually delete that polygon. I no longer need it. I'm not going to see it. But look at how nice and controlled that corner is now. And one hatch. Alright. So there's our basic little rocket ship model. We're going to need a hinge on there. Well, there's lots of details we need to do. Hello, welcome to the Rocket Ship Project. In the uh, second part of modeling, we're going to uh, refine the model, add a bunch of detail, uh, do some preparation for rigging work, and prepare the model for initial texturing. And the question is, how many do we need for it to feel like it's properly ripped? So let's we might just have to try out a few different numbers. So let's say. Uh, something divisible by 4, let's say 60 to begin with, and just see how that looks. I think if we put our layers together and look at this in the context of our whole ship, this is feeling pretty good. So now let's take a look at this object when we sub it and see if it looks any good. That's actually not too bad nice handle. Put a shaft down the middle. So let's go ahead and do that. Grab a new layer. Create another disk. And we'll just go ahead and put a shaft. I wonder if that might uh, look a little flimsy down at the bottom. Maybe we should connect more than one poly. Maybe we should connect two. So we'll select two on this side and two on this side and bridge those. That feels a lot better. Look at that. And now this should line up perfectly with our gear leg. Let's just open our layers panel. Add our gear leg in there. Deselect the polys. And we see we have a nice connection and it's going to rotate very nicely. Now the last thing we need to do to this foot is sort it out so that the pivot is properly centered. Okay, so there we have everything. And you can see the antenna is up there. And wings inner and wings outer have separate materials. And you know, we may very well go back and uh, add complexity or remove it. Uh, we don't know yet. Um, 
you know, our goal is to make this a really beautiful looking rocket ship toy. So who knows what's going to be needed down the end. We have a broad idea and we're going to start with that broad idea and then we're going to look at it and evaluate it and make decisions as we go along. And that's the process, that's the artistic process. Um, this isn't just a technical process. We can't start with a solid technical plan and expect that that's how it's going to go. We need to accept that there are going to be some changes we're going to make along the, along the way as our ideas either pan out or do not pan out. Uh, and we need to be open to making those changes as we move along in order to end up with the, the best looking final product. So the next step for this model, and this is by no means the very end of modeling by the way. We may very well uh, find shortcomings in our modeling, uh, more refinements that are required as we go along, and we need to be open to that as well. Uh, we're going to discover these things as we get more and more refined uh, and as we see an image that's closer and closer to final, that's how we're going to find all the missing bits and pieces and go back and add that detail in. So uh, uh, the next step is going to be dropping this into layout and giving it a bit of a rig and then taking a look at it. And then after that, we'll, we'll put on some basic textures and see how far we can get. The goal always must be to get the best quality image for the least amount of work. And that may sound like a lazy philosophy, but it isn't. It's a really efficient philosophy. Um, the artist who gets bogged down in the minute details of this modeling before seeing what it looks like in the shot is the artist who takes ten times longer to complete a shot than the artist who uses this philosophy. And the real tangible difference there is that the artist who takes a tenth of time is the one who's going to get the raises and be the most employable. So don't get bogged down in details until those details are really important. Seriously. 